it's the flip man. Flip man, flip man. You want some money in your hand? Flipping houses without credit or your cash. Get that bag. And we are live for show 138. Um, we got a full house tonight with both of the lovely young ladies and we're ready to rock. So we're a little late. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We don't see any many, that many comments. So <laughs> where are you guys? Where did that go? A couple of people. Somebody had a question in there already. Yeah, we got LNL Investings. We got T5YL4 saying what's up from Philly and Investings in Cali. So welcome and thank you. It's Ty mentioned for joining us on show number 138. BJ Johnson from Tulsa, Oklahoma is here as well. What it do, people? I see Instagram. Y'all are slowly joining. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope this uh, live stream finds each and every one of you well. Um, so without further ado, thanks, Ty and Renikia. Thank you for being here as well. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. Just maintaining, maintaining. So we're going to jump right into this thing, guys. If you have questions, call us now. Call us now. Yeah, I'm on with six. Okay. At 205-386-0035. Instagram, I will post that number right in the comment sections for you as well. Um, so, but to repeat it again, it's 205-386-0035. Um, Shaq, what up, though, from Westside, Detroit? Mr. Miji, Major Davis, and Eric, uh, our movie quote guru. So, jumping right into this thing, l l Investing says, I have a possible deal in Cali. Was a 6-3, now a 2-1 whole second level burn down. Seller was asking 750000 We got him down to 650. The comps for the 2-1 is 775 and it needs a lot of rehab. Is this a deal or no deal? So what's the 6-3 now a 2-1? Who's that? I guess he means a, a six, six bedroom, three bath. Now the is it now three two ones? I don't know what he means by that, but oh, he said, oh, I think he's saying that it was a six three, but the second level has completely burned, so now it's just a two one. Yeah. Ah, so you still yeah. have four. You have four rooms and two on the second level. Four and two up there. Right. Gotcha. So it was nice to um, Oh well, no, I don't think that's a good deal. Yeah. The repair. I mean, because I'm mean, obviously, if if a property is is if, if a property sits in a subdivision and this is a six three, that's probably because all the other properties in that subdivision is also a six three. So the two one, it wouldn't it wouldn't really um it re it wouldn't go with the remaining of the subdivision. So most likely, no one would purchase a two bedroom one bath in a six bedroom neighborhood. So you would have to finish off the, you would have to finish off that second level and make sure you add back those additional bedrooms. All right. Well, thank you for that. El Hodge, I see you. And yes, we're still around. I'm still around. Let's not start today. How about that? Um, let's see here. Our next question is going to be, would you recommend setting agent commission when working with them on the buyer side or would you let them add their fee to the wholesale price? So I guess we're talking about when working alongside a real estate agent, how do they get paid? Hmm. That's a really good question. And it's all negotiable. Um, as you know, um, a private deal is not as, as um, you know, it doesn't go by the same jurisdiction, the same laws as a real estate agent. Um, so it's, it's kind of negotiable. I mean, you could negotiate. Most likely the seller is not going to uh, pay for that. Most likely the buyer is not going to pay for that, um, especially if it's a private deal. That's one of the reasons why you go private. So you don't have to pay commissions. So you want to kind of either add that into the fee some type of way or um, are you 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 will most likely be paying that agent out of your out of your commission as well. What do you think, Tom? Uh, yeah, uh, like you say, it's uh, it's negotiable. Um, as far as 
uh, who pays it, but um, we're assuming you're referring to a wholesale transaction, then yeah, the um, um, the fee that normally is going to well, I guess again it's negotiable, but you may have to pay that if you're if the um, if an agent well, let, let me, normally what an agent is going to want they're going to try to get paid as many ways as possible. But yeah. if they bring they their client, whenever they even <laughs> contact you and say, hey, I have a client that's interested in buying this property, do you pay an agent's commission? You know what I'm saying? Even though their client is going to pay them too now, they're going to ask you, do you pay? And a lot of them will make that decision where they even tell their client or not, whether you say, yeah, whether or not you say yes or no or whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> so normally you're going to have to give up some, but you're only talking, you know, 3%, maybe 4%. Uh, whatever, even on, and it, it, well, I say that only. It just depends on how much money you're going to make, you know, how much you're going to give. Because there, that three percent or four percent is going to be based off the total sale price. That's what right. that's what they're going to want to want to get paid on. So, how much of that is going to eat into your assignment fee? So, all right. So, Ty, this is from Chapa Guapa on Instagram. And before I have him put his information out there, he wants to know, would it be possible for you to work numbers for him on a specific address? Um, so I guess question and chop, if you want to put your address and your deal out there, you know, That's fine. The no universe, it's no big deal, but you just need to make sure you put all the information in there. And as soon as you do, I will relay that to Ty or you're more than welcome to give us a call and call in. Hopefully your call will make it through our flip line. So CO113258, thanks for joining us. I see you in here often. Wants to know, how was it for the both of you when you were in the beginning phase of wholesaling and no one believed in you? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, right. That's a good one. I guess I'll start it off, but uh, I'll let Tom finish that. But it's, it's not even wholesaling. I think in the beginning stages of anything, no one believes in you. You know, you have to have... Um, you have to see the vision. And one of my motto is that if you can't see the vision, you can't complete the mission. So as long as you can see it, you can go out there and do what it takes to complete it. You don't need, you know, when you're, when you, when, when you stated that no one believes in you, that means that, um, it looks like I froze. That, that means that, um, I look, I froze. Um, so, um, you said that no one believes in you. So that, you know, that that puts us at a place that we're looking for validation. We're looking for someone to validate that what we're doing is right. Um, so it's, it's, it's up to you to validate what you're trying to accomplish is right. But most importantly, no one is going to believe in you when you first start your journey in anything it has nothing to do with wholesale. And it could be a business that you another idea that you have It's very important that you believe in you. Um, you know, that 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 first so many steps is, is really um, a, a faith steps. Um, I call them faith steps. When you first start, you got to walk out on faith and you got to believe you have to have the, uh, a relentless belief in yourself that what it is that you want to get out there and accomplish that you can, regardless if your family members believe in you or not. Um, for me, um I've had many more failures at a, a business uh, a ventures or entrepreneurship than success, but it only took one to, to override all of that. Right. <laughs> and when I had, uh, I guess the bug of entrepreneurship, I wasn't one of these that, you know, it's, it's always been that way. When you were a kid, you were out trying to sell lemonade or garbage bags or, trying to do this or that, you know, just trying, you just, just, it just, just naturally didn't, that, that wasn't me. Uh, it didn't happen to me for me until, um, you know, I was in college or whatever. So when I'm something I listened to or something and, um, some probably really radical or some, and, and it just, um, could be deemed radical. Let me say that. Um, and it just, it's always stuck with me or whatever. It's for just doing for yourself. Don't beg. One thing you people that know me, I don't complain about stuff. Politics, I'll, just nothing. I don't complain about nothing, right? Uh, not saying I don't have problems, but I just don't, you know, 
Well, I guess I was complaining about my nephew earlier, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but that, 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 I, I, I was just, uh, I was just, oh, I, I was gonna stand with that situation or whatever. But anyway, you know, you get what I'm saying. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that so with me when I started, uh, like you know, want to try to do things, you know, make money outside of what considered the norm back then. Being an entrepreneur, quote unquote, wasn't cool. It's cool now. Everybody like a spec. You don't pose to work for the man, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. You know, this whatever makes you happy is, is at the end of the day for me. But back then, if you if you said you wanted to own your own business, it meant you didn't want to work anywhere. Right. <laughs> it didn't mean that you were going to actually succeed. Right. And they produce income for yourself and loved ones, blah, blah, blah. It meant, oh, you don't want to work anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you lazy. Don't no yeah. You don't want to get no job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now it's right. cool. Mm-hmm. It's like the flip flop of that. You should Everybody not to know. Everybody, Everybody right. should want that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, so I, my point is, even bringing that up is that I was back there when it wasn't cool. Oh, uh, we lost Renee. Um, I was back there was it when it wasn't. Um, she'll come back. I was there. You go. Hey, I, I was there. I was. I was. I was on it when it wasn't cool, and so I didn't care what people thought, right? right. And I learned a long time ago, more more so on the real estate side. Side once I got into real estate after the first couple of years, I just stopped telling people what I do, and that's really how this stuff, man stuff came about. When I, you know, because people start to see you have success in you know different ways that know you. And I would tell that I'll spend time and tell people, friends, or family, you know, exactly what I did, and they wouldn't do anything with it. So mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put the information out there for people that want to take advantage of free. But if they want to get into my time, then mm-hmm. that will cost. So all that sort of came together. My point is, um, I don't what was the question? Exactly. <laughs> the question was, how did you get started where no one believed in you? Oh, I, I so didn't you're have, on the right track. Yeah, I, I didn't have to have my point is that's what I'm trying to go. My point <laughs> is I didn't have to have that validation for someone to believe in me. You exactly. see what I'm saying? Now I assume that's what she means. Now she's talking about uh, how do sellers take you serious and all this stuff? That's just some just a different conversation. The reason right. they sell, if, if that's what you're talking about, sellers will take you serious because you're educated enough where you're so confident in what you're saying, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. other stuff won't even matter, right? Exactly. Because in most cases, if you go through enough of this just stuff with wholesaling or just real estate investing in general, you know more than 99% of the people walking around. Not that that makes mm-hmm. you better than them. It just means you know about this topic, a way that you can make an unbelievable amount of money and living financially for yourself that most mm-hmm. people just can't even grasp. Don't, don't even believe that's possible. You, you can you can actually make money from no money. How, how can you do that? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. you can do it and do it mm-hmm. on a, a like ridiculous level or whatever. Mm-hmm. So so I, hopefully I cover both of that. I got a little sidetracked, but hopefully I cover both of those. Oh, but this no, guy, I got, it, I got it up now. Whoo, shortest distance between two points is straight line, y'all. That was good, though. <laughs> line to roll. I, <laughs> hey, entrepreneurship, but you be could mean you ain't want to work nowhere. Right, right. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't even know how to find a job, right? I think about that sometimes. I, I, I ain't saying mm-hmm. beyond it. I ain't beyond it. Right. I'm not saying that. But I wouldn't even right. know where to start. What would I start, Adrian? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What what I put on? I ain't been doing that. What, what? <laughs> The way the unemployment rate is, a lot of people. How you word what you've been doing. So I'm a lie. Say I ain't been seven. Not lying is how you word. So it's like being a, a a street sweeper. I am a sanitation specialist who specializes oh. in. And and, and and in street. I like that sanitation I mean, specialist. Civil and civil cleaning. I mean, it's how you 
what that mean? I clean the street, but that ain't what you asked me. I it's it's verbiage. It's how like, you put like it. Fred said, you could be a coordinator. Yeah, yes, you could be anything. So, <laughs> that means your resume would be, oh my gosh, the entrepreneurship, the the talent, the the go get, the multitasking, the a lot of these, a lot of these floors don't like entrepreneurs. Don't That's what that. I'm saying, because they don't think you're gonna they, be they they don't like entrepreneurs. You're not a team player a lot of times. They don't yeah. think you can be yeah, managed. Think about yourself. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. And you they know that you're, you're not long term. Yeah, you're not long term. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I would have to. That's what I'm. Yeah. No, but well, that's why you don't tell everybody. That's why I asked. I'm gonna have to lie. That's why I asked. <laughs> well, well like, um, Donald well, Trump said, "Call them and turn to facts." And the female comes in I'll, and says, "Oh, the that one. What did you say?" I'll yeah, turn yeah. Turn it to facts. Turn it to facts. Hey. <laughs> hey, if, if you got your Trump, hey, if Donald right, Trump can get the if Donald Trump can get the highest all uh, the highest position of all. We can all fulfill any position out here. Be anything you want. Hey, uh, if you got your if you got your Trump check, post it in the comments and send me twenty dollars, please. Oh. <laughs> Y'all get that check. <laughs> Trump don't check. listen to what they He's say not, about these checks. He, he is not going to let y'all forget that he just gave this money out. <laughs> oh, and he had to sign them. He's the only president that had to sign the checks. Exactly. It wasn't like, hey. I put. <laughs> the back the economy. Man, <clears throat> hey, but anyway, I, I wouldn't even know where to start, but I guess I would figure it out. You know, you would figure it out. I'll figure it out. That's a mode kicks in. <laughs> okay, twenty dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> that what we charge <laughs> night flipping brought to you by Digulator.com. Oh, we, we want our share of the Trump checks. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so guys, we had um, Chapo Guapo who gave us an ad on Instagram. So Chapo, make sure okay. you're listening and make sure you follow quickly um, to respond. So we have the address. So what is the information, Chapo, that you have? So what is the seller want? What are you asking? What are you putting out there for? What are the repairs? We need all that information, Chapo, so we can. Um, oh, only to do it. Now. Only to do it now. Yeah, you're supposed to do it right now. Okay. So we can evaluate his deal. So Chapo is giving us our actual address. That's for him. And we're all going to do this. Is it a deal question? So he's giving us a property in San Marcos, Texas. And San, San Marcos. I said San Marcos. Oh, okay. San, San Marcos, Texas. Okay. And so what we're looking at. He said he posted surface, you posted. We got the address. We, we it's, oh, you can't see. It. You can't see it, can you? We got it on the screen here, Chopper. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, we're, oh, we're, it's on Instagram. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, we're we're about um we're uh seventeen minutes and thirty seconds in, so uh you can um check it out there. I don't know what you want us to do. Water <laughs> damage to the uh, second floor. He said repairs are twelve thousand. If water damage to the second floor, gonna be more than twelve thousand. Is this the one that went from six three to two one? No, 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 no. This, this, oh. this, no, it's uh, it's in San Marcos, Texas. Uh, okay. th this is it here on the screen. Y'all can see the screen, right? Dang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I turn now. I turn now. Hold on. But I know that he can on Instagram, but us on Facebook, um, Periscope, and YouTube can. So repairs to twelve thousand. How much are they wanting for it? That's gonna be more than ever. Water. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see what the square footage is. Let, let's let's look at that. Give us some numbers. Sure, if you still in here, there you go. All right. Um, yeah, see, it's 17, it's almost it's 1750 square feet, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Man. So, so what's the ARV? Uh ARV. Okay, uh, uh man, there ain't a lot of comps in here. It's in Texas too. That it's gonna be tricky because it's a non-disclosure state. Um mm -hmm. A property sold uh, through MLS. Is this MLS? No, that's a commercial property. Is this a commercial property? Let me see. No, it's a single family. Mm -hmm. There are no comps in here. Okay. Um, let me look in public record. There's okay. There's two right there. Um. So for this property, we're looking at the comps are about what? There are only two. Uh, which is not good. Um, one of them is 0.2 miles away. The other is 0.3. God, I know we all over the place, but let's see here. Uh, are those houses? 
Um, so guys, what he's using is Dilulator, and this is Dilulator.com, aka PropStream, which you most definitely can use. But what he's done is plugged and chugged in the address. That's a commercial property. And now looking for the ARVs and comps by um, accessing accessing the information from property sold within a particular time frame. With uh, comparable yeah, these, these not these not gonna count square foot. So it's not much here to go off of. Yeah. So. Really nothing I can tell you on this, my man. Texas is a little tricky, uh, but it appears that uh, there's not a lot of transactions in here. Anyway, it still will pull the MLS properties in that area, and it's only pulling one. And That's true. Uh, so Texas is a, a very active market. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's a non-disclosure state, and it's hard to get uh, some of this information uh -huh. sometimes depending on what part you're talking about. Uh, uh -huh. And wherever this property is located, um um san marcos how big of a town is that chapo still waiting on you to give us um the price that the seller is asking for oh y'all seen it okay it's a population of about sixty three thousand. so that's that's a little small uh so yeah. there's not going to be a lot of activity in there man i, I really mm -hmm. can't tell you on this one playboy um, um it's not enough it's not enough information for me to give you an, an opinion on this sorry Okay, so we'll move on. Let's go to another question. And yes, um, Ralph Williams, you're right. Um, is it a deal? We try to do a couple every time we come on on Thursdays where you guys give us some numbers. Doesn't necessarily have to be the complete address as Chapo gave, but um, even if we just plug and chug the numbers into dealulator.com, the calculator um, there, we can kind of evaluate what your numbers there. Um, he did say the mortgage balance is 115000 on that property hmm. that you saw but at, at chapel we took a look at it and it's just not much information you might do better with hands and feet on the ground locally um to pull more information is he there um don't know okay. i don't know so philly global media says hey team do you think stickers with my bandit sign layout on them will have any effect depending on placement looking for other ways to find motivated mm -hmm. sellers other than bandit and or a website well let me tell you what mm -hmm. I did. let me tell you what i did once i've done some stuff i i had the brilliant idea that i was going to take um um basically what he's saying stickers mm -hmm. and i put them on small magnets right Mm -hmm. you know about the size of a business card and mm -hmm. a lot of uh uh gas pumps there's an area there that's going to be magnetic that's going to be visible to where you may stick your card in or you're watching the, the thing going and so i put them mm -hmm. out at um like several gas stations right mm -hmm. didn't work now it didn't work i don't mm -hmm. know if i gave it enough um you know enough time but i got several calls from the people that are running the gas stations <laughs> get my you know what down off of their pumps so i ain't saying that's what you should do. i'm just saying that was my attempt of trying to use many bandit signs um mm -hmm. in that way so your boy didn't did some stuff. I, 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 hey, we ain't admitting to nothing. He takes <laughs> that is not an admission of guilt or anything Allegedly. else. Mm -hmm. oh, no. And I would say this um, with the Benison placement, you, you know, you want to put yourself in the, in the, um, I guess the driver position. You know, I don't know if you're trying to place it on your car or something, but, you know, just think about Benison on cars when you're driving. It's very hard to look at the side of someone's car when you're driving, unless it's at a stop sign. But I know some of the best places to put it at is, a, like like Tyler would say as well, is on the back back side of your car because it's easier when as, you know when people are following behind you, it's easier for them to write down your number because it's right in front of you. So um, you know when it comes to cars, I think the back side of the car is good. I mean, although we see a lot of cars with the side. Um, you know, but I think only people that is really at a stop sign or something that's next to you will be able to really write it down. But if I'm going just as fast as, as fast as you on 75 or something, it'll be very hard for me to read the side of your car and write down and write down the, the number. So. All right. So let's see here. <laughs> 
Flip, one of my bird dogs is a code enforcement administrator, and he sent me his vacant list, but a lot of the properties are now under bank ownership. Sounds like you got a good plug. Um, you ever deal with REO directly? Do you have any thoughts? I've never personally done that before. You all had any luck with that, Renika? Um, um, real estate own. Um, I have done with asset managers. Um, but a lot of times, a lot of asset managers don't want to deal with in investors directly. Um, they're going to deal with a real estate agent because at that point, it's in foreclosure. Um, and, and a real estate agent must transact that property. I mean, that, and, you know, a real estate agent must represent that transaction. So a lot of times, once it goes back to uh, as a real estate owned, basically um, bank owned properties, um, and then they assign a real estate agent or a broker to uh, facilitate the transaction. So what I what I usually would do is contact the um, asset manager who is over the REO tape, and you ask them what is their process. Every bank is different. They may, you know, that particular bank may are dealing with individual investors or whatever the case may be, but they will tell you exactly what are their steps in purchasing the properties. Okay. Well, moment to give a shout out. Hey, Miss Lorinda and Lorinda Montgomery, Malik, Maurice, Patience, Justin, Deshante, Ralph. Hi there. Robert Jones is Adria. And let's see here. Major Davis, Robert Moore, and Love Mitchell. Hey, Rick Pino. I haven't seen you in a while in Salvatore. Now, this, 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 this. Next question is going to come from Justin. It says, I bought 100 signs. I put out 75. I only got one phone call so far. I'm in Norfolk, Virginia. About 20 signs are still up. Should I keep going with band of signs or try different marketing? Um, well, it, it without knowing, uh, well, how many are your signs still up? That's key. 20. 20? 20? 20 of the 75. Well, yeah, that, that's your issue. You, you know, 100 is a good start, but you can already go in and place the second order whenever you, if you're just going to start with 100. Uh, it's all about uh, consistency and, and obviously visibility of your signs. You know, I don't know what your signs say either that that, that could factor in or whatever. So uh, most definitely you don't want to give up on those because uh, they will produce leads if done the correct way, which um, I have a couple of videos where I sort of do demonstrations on uh, how to use them or whatever. Um, uh, I was trying to look for, I could address and did a video on my little, uh, bandit car and i was trying to find the the image where what Renika was sort of talking about you don't have to go to this stream but it's really not as expensive as you think it would be um but um this is what i'm trying to stumble here i just wanted to show you like uh being able to read that from the rear versus on the side even though this painted though this is like i say this is the extreme side of it no, but if you had a magnet back there on that car and it wasn't the rest of it wasn't painted up, you know, you force people to read your message. You know, that's you know very important on what she was saying versus on the side. Not saying you can't do that, but if you got to choose between the two, you want to start with some in the rear because you force people to read your message. They can be driving at 70 miles an hour and still read your message and get the information in reality because you may be behind someone. You may drive 10 miles behind them. At, at that mm -hmm. speed or whatever, or a lot farther. So, um, but uh, going back to the banner signs, yeah, they work. Just, you need to just be more consistent with them, do more signs. And again, hopefully the message is clear and, and simple and um, you're putting them in great places where you're getting a lot of visibility. All right. Uh, McKaylin, hi. Thank you for joining us tonight. Glad to see you here, little one. Okay. Genghis Kong says, Genghis Kong, Genghis Kong says, focus on the process and not the results. Eventually, the results will come. Thank you. You like that. And I, I would say to the last guy, um, Ben and size works. Is it, is no is no if ands and buts about it. It's consistency that really wins overall. Yeah, I'm looking at somebody um, here on uh, Instagram. KG buys houses. He says that I'm assuming he's referring to Bandit Science. They they work. I'm in the in a in a competitive competitive market, Los Angeles, California. 
you know, and they mm -hmm. work, you know, now you're mm -hmm. in a competitive mark, mar market, but you're like, it's almost like you're in another country too, when you got 10 million people in just one county out there in LA County or whatever. And that don't include Riverside County and San Bernardino and Orange County, just re ridiculous amount of people out there. You know what I'm saying? So it may be competitive, but the opportunities are endless. And the checks mm -hmm. are so much bigger than what most people are used to when it comes to wholesaling out there. So, but bandit signs definitely work out there too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Ralph Williams has a really good question. And I know they're all they're good they're, questions. They're, I th <laughs> Chill out. Folks get <laughs> Anyway, he has a great question in addition to the other great questions of that, but I can only ask one at a time. Okay, so Ty and Renikia, his question is, when visiting your property as a newbie, what am I taking photos and videos of? So I don't want people to think, oh, the house, duh. No, specifically, what are you taking, the, taking photos and videos? Who are you thinking that you need to make sure that you know, this is going to the half. What do you need to cover? Like, we're going to take a picture of the HVAC unit. We taking a picture I, of I, I, the windows. I, I love taking out. Just give me a chance to. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure there's a there's a video. Give me a chance to go to go. my TikTok to show y'all. But I think it's a really good question. Mm -hmm. So while he's waiting for that, the video, what you got? That is a really good question. Um, and and then so I'm going to show you all a video, but most importantly. You want to, you're, you're selling a house. So, you know, you got to think about this as your product. So you want to put your product in the best light possible. So when your seller look at it, it's a no-brainer. So you want to take a picture of, you know, of, of of each one of the rooms. You want to take a picture of, you know, uh, you know, you always want to get a, a full picture of the kitchen, a full picture of each one of the rooms, a full picture of each one of the bathrooms, multiple pictures multiple angles um and then if you do the video you just want to go in each and every one of the rooms to give the selling idea of exactly how the property is laid out and and exactly what you're looking at now if you want to take a picture of the hvac and the and things of that nature but it, it's come a time where the, the seller will have to come out because you can't most people are not getting on top of the roof and taking pictures of things on the roof and things of that nature so you you just always in my opinion, you always want to put your house in the best, best light possible, but also not necessarily shy away from, um, um, uh, you know, large holes in the walls or things that large repairs that you know is very detrimental to that seller being able to make some type of decision. Okay. Well, well I'm going to show you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> from my TikTok, Axe Flip Man. Please follow me. I think I have some mm -hmm. entertaining stuff on there. I may be wrong, but I think it's I do. Very entertaining. You dancing on top? Let me find out. <laughs> a little bit. When I got a couple of them out there. <laughs> but like this video right here, basically, is a TikTok that I did. Just, just trying to think outside the box. But the video, basically, is a video of the house, but I sped it up or whatever. So, you know. So, but but that gives you an idea of you know just you going in and just video the property. Mm -hmm. And then as you notice, it's not clean, guys. It's as is, so yeah. it's not it's not being realistic. Like they're moving out, or they're getting ready, or they've abandoned the property. So just to show it as is, the, your buyer mm -hmm. knows that they have to come in. And, you know, hey, if you say, hey, they just left abruptly, that there's probably stuff that they have to clean out. They're not expecting this to be retail ready. That's the whole point of this wholesaling thing. The properties that you have aren't turnkey. So they're not right. expecting, you know, it to just be perfect. So it's okay to show the video just like it ties. There's stuff on the floor. There's still garbage in the garbage can outside. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's stuff still in the fridge. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. is what it is, but that's not going to shy have a buyer shy away from the deal if the numbers, as many can always say, it's all in the numbers. If the numbers add mm -hmm. up, I don't care if there's trash across the floor. I just might have sweep that out. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, several things I, I like going right here. Take a moment. Since we're about 30 minutes into this halfway, let's talk about some of the things that are available to you. No, this is a place where you ask your questions, we answer your questions, but there are a lot of resources that Ty and Renikia both have put out for you 
um, to enhance your wholesaling career. Now, we talk about band size, we talk about marketing, we talk about advertising, we talk about um, scripts and whatnot. But at the end of the day, this is a business. I just have to shoot two straight. This is still a business for Ty and Renikia. This is their bread and butter. So they perfect it and they're still perfecting their craft. Now, Ty has whew, websites galore that help benefit you. We have Dilly Lady. We're going to do another Is It A Deal, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We have another specific address. But right now, guys, I want you to take a listen to the resources that Renikia has available to you. When you say, mm -hmm. hey, I got this whole selling thing down. I want to do the next level. I want to be a landlord. I want to do this, um, you know, buy and hold. What is this about? How can I extend my credit? How do I fix my credit? That's where you tap into the resources that Renikia has available to you. So Renikia, what, it, what it yes. is it that <laughs> your company can do for our subscribers to get them to the next level if they're ready? Absolutely. Thank you so much. As always, I'm thankful to be a part of the Flipman show. Um, what we do is specialize in just creative financing. As you know, there's only so much you can do in business without having to kind of either use other people's money or use your own money so you can get your business to the next level or continue to provide working capital so you can expand your business. So what we do is provide um, creative financing options. Uh, we have gap funding to help you offset some of the expenses, even if from wholesaling, um, it offsets some expenses to your fix and flip, your down payments, um, your closing costs and things of that nature. We also provide uh, residential and commercial uh, funding if you're looking to purchase, um, acquire, purchase, and rehab. We provide purchase and rehab funding to get your business to the next level or to take your portfolio to the next level. So if you want to look into do any fix and flips, we also have buying holes. And of course, all of our residential loans do not need tax returns, bank statements, income verification, or pay stubs. Um, but if you want to take advantage of any of those products, just go to findmynextdeal.com. All right. Yeah, I'm looking at a question here on Instagram. Uh, well, is that a question? Um, is it is the market? Oh, okay. Houses are expensive in Southern California. Is the wholesaling business possible in this expensive market? <laughs> uh, very much so. Um, I'm actually um, uh, a couple of guys reached out to me um, on Instagram. They've been wholesaling out there since 1992. Three, I think they said. Mm. Uh, uh, three brothers, and you know they, you know they went from being agents to finding out about wholesaling and not doing the agent thing anymore to wholesaling mm. to still wholesaling to flipping to uh, new construction on properties in Compton and and uh, South Central, you know, places that a lot of people may uh, uh, shy away from. You know, they they mm. love it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, because it's so hard to find affordable housing out there or whatever. Um, so um, so to answer the question, yeah, in a market, see, so what you have to understand, guys, if quote unquote the hood in Birmingham is sixty thousand and it's three hundred thousand in in LA, you know what that means? That's what people can afford. Mm. That's simple. The only reason they can sell houses that for that much is because people can't afford it. Mm -hmm. the, it is simple economics. Yeah. The man mm -hmm. is the only reason they can sell it for that. But people still die in L.A. They still get divorced. They still lose their jobs, a.k.a. COVID-19 and income, mm -hmm. right? They still mm -hmm. relocate. You inherited properties. You have tired landlords, unpaid taxes, medical bills, kids tuition, drug problems. We can go on and on. You know what those mm -hmm. are? Possibly opportunities. opportunities, but two words, motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. Your job as a wholesaler slash investor is mm -hmm. to make sure you do an effective job of letting them know you exist. That's how you do deal. I don't care where you are, especially in a market like that. It's, it just never can be enough competition with all the foreign investors out there in L.A. and New York and those markets like that. And you had Zillow buying. They about to fold. They going to fold their tenants for the buying because they were just buying. They weren't buying with any sense. And open mm -hmm. door. I mean, what's the other place called? Um, was open door? Places like that. 
uh, they were just uh, hedge fund and uh, investors, but they weren't real investors. However, my point mm -hmm. is, is that with all that, you still can get out there and just crush it, just crush mm -hmm. it, and no one even know you exist for real. And you know, mm -hmm. you may have made out there, you made a million dollars, you know, in 2020 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. And the market like that, it really doesn't matter. You just got to get out there and do your thing. You know, it's just that simple. And you start today, and a year from now, you can be a major player in a market like that. Or even if you're not a major player, you still made six figures. Right. And their spreads are 10 times larger out there. Oh, it's ridiculous. I think it's better out there. Right. I mean, wholesaling is. Yes. <laughs> the same stuff that happens in Birmingham happens that make people mm -hmm. more to sell a piece of real estate cheap. The same stuff happens in L.A. to make yeah. people sell real estate cheap. But you have to mm -hmm. do the same thing that I do in Birmingham is let them know you exist. That's exactly. they, they call that marketing and advertising. That's what they mm -hmm. call it. Walmart, Target, they could probably not market and still be profitable, but they mm -hmm. are afraid to. They spend billions yearly mm -hmm. letting you know they exist, even though you mm -hmm. know they exist. Exist. So Ooh, what that's so what do you think you do when they don't know you exist? <laughs> that's deep. We definitely need to be marketing. We definitely need to be marketing. <laughs> Every day. Soapbox you know number two. Soapbox number two. Ooh, I like it. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to call you the average baby. <laughs> cash app. I told y'all that cash app. I need my share of that bread. Guys, right now, listen. Um, my Instagram users, we're at 41 minutes into this live. We're going to go to dealulator.com. Go to dealulator.com. Okay. See, yes, see on dealulator.com, which is a website, aka prop stream. But Ty has created for you several things right here on dealulator.com. One, you can utilize dealulator service. Um, oh, you mean the, like the calculator? No, we're supposed to go to the address. No, you mean prop stream, then dealulator, aka prop. Yeah, okay, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Okay. So, um, here's here's the address. So, guys, when you go to dealulater.com, you can sign up for the five day free subscription. Um, it, it is a paid subscription, but it is a mighty mighty tool to have in your war chest to evaluate your deals. But if you don't want that, um, what's on dealulater.com is also basically a property assessor where you can decide whether it's a deal. It's the dealulater calculator. Um, where you plug and chug your ARB, your repairs, um, how much you intend to make, your fees, all that good stuff. And you, you'll see it plain as day, whether those numbers add up or not. Also on dealulator.com, when you go to that website, you'll find the one-page contract that Ty has been using since the beginning of his um, wholesaling career that is available to you. Simply put, to plug and chug your information and yeah, deliver cool. that via email to um, your, what's on? That address is not to deliver it to your um prospective seller uh, and your buyer because you're going to use that contract for both. Let's put that out there. That contract is used for both ways. Um, but the address we have is from a user on Instagram whose name is what you got? Um, I'm not pulling on what the what is this? Uh, let, let me make let me let me um, I just need to know the name so I can tell them the information. Oh, the name is uh Mike. Web, web online, Mike Web online. Mike Web online. We're using the address that you gave us in Dallas, Texas, that you wanted to evaluate. Um, and we're going to all together take a look at this property. Um, give us a second. We're having a little. Oh, bit it's of Avenue. It he said Street. It's Avenue, I think. Okay. I, I Googled the address, what he gave me. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Still not pulling up. Okay. Yeah, double check the address, my man. Double check the address. Uh -uh, go back. Go double check the address, Mike okay. Webby. Um, we're going to go the beast. You are looks like streaming from YouTube. Address is you ready? Yeah. 1945 North Florence Avenue. And this is in Tulsa. Okay. 74110. So the beast. We're gonna take a look at your property. We pull it up. First thing you have is just simple property information. It tells you the square foot, lot size, year built. Um, all of that good stuff is going to tell you the owner. Um, well, as shown, and this possibly is just pulled it from your tax assessor's records. So yeah, it's it was accurate. It was sold cash back in uh, December of last year for forty 
7,500. What are you trying to find out? Okay, the beast, you want to know what would you do on a freestyle when you come across this lead? We need to know how much your seller is saying they want for this house. How much are you trying to make? So that's questions you actually have to give us. Does this property need repairs? Um, but off on the offshoot, how would they get the, how would they, what would the ARV be for this property? Well, um, hold it com to comparables. Got a lot of them, which is good. Um, a new update that they put in here that you can go back and forth between MLS data and public record. Oh, you could do both at the same time. What I like to do is, I, if it seems like it's a lot of cash, well enough. Well, there's a lot, a lot of cash transactions in here, so I'm going to target those um, first, and I'll go from sales situation, and uh, it'll pull all the cash transactions, and. So we have 15,000, 25, 7,100, 16,000, throw out that 129, uh, 25,000, 82, 25, 10, 14, uh, 38, 33, 22, 34, 40, 75, 34. Uh, so, wow, you got a good range of cash amounts here. So now let's look at, so we'll say anywhere from 25 to, to maybe 30 in cash as far as what seems to be consistent. And now uh, we can look at actual uh, comps here. And uh, let me see where your consistency at. So I'm showing like <clears throat> maybe 120. Those are two cash transactions. I don't, I don't like those there. Um, those are a little farther away. They are 0.4 miles away. So let's look at it from the distance. All right, so you have um, you have one, two, three, four, five. They're only a block away, and uh, you got 25, 57, 47, 7,100, 82. It's just all over. This is these is all over the place. Um, what is it suggesting? So this is only suggesting a value of around fifty thousand. That's probably what I would go with because the ones that are close to it. Um, you got the 57,000. You got one that's on the same street at 60,000. So, yeah, that's probably what I would roll with. I would say between uh, 55 and 60, actually, as far as an ARV. And then, like I say, it seems like they're paying cash 25 to 30 consistently in there. So, that's probably what I would look at it. So, okay. Well, Debeesh, you didn't give us much more information. So, just using that as an opportunity to show you guys how you can use dealulator.com aka PropStream to um, calculate a possible ARV with multiple um, sales recorded in that area. Um, but from there, that's not only where you would have to stop, guys. You would have to have any repairs, um, the seller's asking price, all of that would be information that's needed. Now, Mike Webby didn't see that you responded on Instagram, so we'll just jump back into our questions, guys. But don't forget, visit dealulator.com um for the contract for the daily later calculator and also to take advantage of the five-day free trial um, before you commit to the subscription and add this as a tool to your chest um so next question good deal todd todd says he just paid the subscription fee for prop stream and it has a lot of info and now he just needs to capitalize shaq smith concurs good deal um let's see Fat Boy Fresh says, I've sent the deal. Okay, so this would, I guess we, he sent a deal over, and the ARV you guys used was based off of smaller square foot homes, which aren't comparing apples to apples. So, in a situation, why would that happen? What, um, um you talking about the property just sent over? No, I guess just one in the past. So, not speaking specifically about his. How property. much small, how much smaller is he talking about the square footage? Right. So that a fact fancy your property may be out of the norm for that neighborhood right right and some neighborhoods that'll matter and a lot of them it really won't matter you may be if it's in a um like that house we were just looking at which is a 50 60 50 50 to sixty thousand dollar neighborhood it really won't matter 
Right. You know what I'm saying? The people ain't gonna they only gonna pay what they're gonna pay in them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, if you're in a higher right. end neighborhood, maybe like a, a mid uh uh six figure neighborhood, then square the footage will, will really matter or whatever. Mm -hmm. They'll pay it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, if it's like a thousand square feet more than the normal houses out there, they'll probably pay that additional per square feet amount for that house, you know, or something close to it. So it depends. Okay. Um, right. Because you got to realize, you know, it, it really depends on where that square footage is. I mean, that square footage is the difference between two additional bedrooms. So, you know, you got to evaluate the fact that it's a two additional bedrooms. That square footage is two, you know, two different, uh, two uh, additional bedrooms as well. So you have to just, it's very important to try to compare apple to apples, but most importantly, you can just adjust um, compared to your subject property. If, if it's, if it's, you know, a bedroom less then you adjust um, for that a bedroom less. If it's a thousand square foot smaller then you adjust for that. But um you know, the, the key is that you don't want to compare a new construction home to a rehab home or, you know, something of that nature. Those are not apples to apples. But when it comes to if it's a three bedroom versus a two bedroom, that it could be very similar. You just need to adjust for that that, that bedroom. Let me let me uh, just mention this. I released this uh, video today. Um, I'm going to try to do uh, something more definition type, like to explain like different terms or whatever, which I titled this, but it's basically just talking about a real estate contract, which is like the beginning stages of any real estate transaction period, but definitely wholesaling. So if you want to check this video out, I just uploaded, you know, a couple of hours before we got started today. Uh, it's the right real estate contracts for wholesaling houses or whatever. So, you know, I put a little thought into it. So hopefully it, and I tried to simplify it as much as possible. I always try to keep in mind that there may be someone's first time uh, being introduced to, you know, real estate or whatever. And so um, hopefully the video makes sense. So you can check it out uh, just by doing a search on YouTube for that title here. So, Okay. So I guess just Renikia and, and Ty alike, um, talking about the house and comparing apples to apples and apples to oranges, um, I, I guess just from the layman side of it. So there's a neighborhood um, visiting a friend. I'm just going to say the neighborhood is probably the houses are 35, 40, 45 is probably tops, you know, three bedroom, one bath, all old, 1965 to 75, you know, homes. But there's this house on the corner that burned down and they're rebuilding it. And the guy that lives there and rebuilding, it, he has a little, he got extra cash. OK, but the way he's rebuilding the house, this house, he, he bought the lot next door, which was a dilapidated house. So his house is twice the lot size of all the rest of them there. He's made it two stories, which is now a whole nother level bigger than all the, he's put a um, privacy fence around it. This house, I mean, it is nice. It doesn't belong in that neighborhood. So when you have that house that you think, well, I put all this money into this, this is now a $75,000 house. No, it's going to be, what you're talking about, the construction costs more than that. It, well, you got people, but it looks really nice. Yeah. But when all the other houses around it are still 25, 35, 40, you still can't expect to get 75 for that house. He might could get 75,000. He might could get 75,000. That's not yeah. an extreme difference between 45, 45 to 75. That's not, that's not, you, he really? could probably, he might can get that, but you're talking about 150 in that neighborhood. Probably. He probably wouldn't be able to get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. You and, can. It is a such thing as overbuilding. Oh yeah, you can overbuild in a neighborhood where you're where there's certain um, uh, values in your home that you won't even be accounted for because of the neighborhood that you built that property in. It's kind of like um, in in Atlanta. I see it all the time where where we get um, clients and they want to build. I mean, they you know they rehab and they want to put a pool in the backyard. Yeah, you won't be able to get almost no properties in Atlanta has pools in the backyard. So most likely they will never see the value of that pool being there because it's overvalued, um, giving the properties that, that is around it. So sometimes you can overly rehab your property 
uh, where you do not extract that additional value because of the properties around it. It, 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 it won't increase the value. It may make it a little bit more attractive. It may, yeah. It may. You know what I'm saying? It may. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if I can afford a $150,000 house, I mean, I know for many that's probably not much house, but in my area, in my city, that's a pretty nice bag on house. I wouldn't want my $150,000 house to be in a $30,000, $40,000 neighborhood because no. No. So, but the, the way that you the way that you do it is, if I was a person that was going into it, I mean, we, it happens all the time in Atlanta in our West End area. The West End area is right next to Mercedes Benz Stadium. Um, in this area, I mean, at one point in time, we was picking up houses for thirty, forty, fifty thousand. But this the value of the area was a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar value area. So what happens when you build a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar value, I mean, property in a $50,000 neighborhood, what happens is you have to begin to build your own comps. So if you build another property in that same neighborhood, you force the comps. Now there's a comp. So you almost have to, if you're going to be a trendsetter like that, you almost got to get a couple, you know, lots to really, to oh, really, right. um, you know, really be able to get all the value of your property because once the, once the property starts selling, now your your property becomes the comp to the next property. Well, it sounds like he just built the house because he wants to live there. It wasn't for an investment. No, he's living there. Yeah, he yeah, just built it for. He don't care. You know what I'm saying? He'll probably die in there, and then that'll be oh. a kid. Then his kids will give it away for fifty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I gotta show it to you. Like yeah. this stuff is. I'm like, oh, right, yeah, I just plant them like that up here, in Birmingham. Wow, they I'm just. Like, I you, just, you like, can just see that. <laughs> hey, you can just see that. Added. They just keep adding on. It's yes. just, that, hey, they keep adding on the sixty thousand dollar neighborhood. They got their own little mansion. Got the, the gate. And that's right. a, that's you know what it looks like. It looks right. like yeah. you know the house on the hill and like, dang, who live there? Like, man, mm -mm, mm -mm. Hey, people, hey, do what they want to with their money, they, man. They you know absolutely what what they can. can. Yeah. Shashko has a, a question and says, if a seller wants to sell but doesn't want to move out, then should I still do the deal and tell them to move in three months or so? Is this, Or is that even a good idea? So you have a seller that wants to sell the house, but they don't want to move out right now. Like, you can buy it, but I ain't moving now. How does that even work? Who's in control? Oh, okay. I've been in a position like that before. I, I wholesale the property like this. And, but it wasn't the fact that he didn't want to move out. It was the fact that he just needed another month after we closed. And there, there's people who is like that because they need the money that they're closing to purchase the house, the next house that they're moving into. So sometimes they need that, you know, that, that little period after you close. And that's just something that you want to negotiate prior to closing. You almost want to put it in the contract. So, so everyone is on the same page that this seller it's not moving out for another 30 days after after we close. Yeah, I have one like that. And uh, the buyer, um, uh, he bought it, you know, the wholesale, he bought it. But we, we he said, Ty, you know, um, we got to do something. You know, so I go ahead and buy it now, but we got to do something to ensure that, um, um, you know, she going to move out or whatever. So what we did is that we held... Um, you know what it was? It wasn't even that. Uh, this was a renter that was in there. She didn't want to move that fast. And the seller was sympathetic to her. So what we did was um, uh, he he forgave. Let me see. He told her she didn't have to pay rent for one month. The one month she wanted to stay 30 days. He didn't even want to stay that long. 30 days. And he gave her a deposit. But he held back the deposit, which was a, a month's rent. Or whatever mm. and she moved out, so it gave her an incentive. And I did have another um, yeah, uh, so. situation where we held back five thousand dollars until they moved out, or whatever. So yeah. similar situation. So, but this was that was a seller there. Mm. So you have ways to motivate them to move out fast or faster, yeah. and that that would be the same for I don't know if how many people actually run into it, but we had those I guess that are. I know Ty has run into it. He's talked about it before, like squatters. Same thing. Like, hey, I want to sell the house, but 
you got this person in there that just says then my renter my tenant says they're just not going to go out but you use the same tactic motivating them oh yeah you, out, you, but... you, you pay them to leave you know what i'm saying cash for keys as they say but cat they normally say cash for keys for another reason but cash for keys in this yeah. situation too. cash for keys yeah you want to pay them to leave you know what i'm saying if, pay them in I suggest anybody yeah. in the landlord. That's it. A lot of times, that's really what it is. They just can't afford to leave sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can incentivize them with a cash for keys type of situation. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so what do from Instagram, it was a question. What is a catchy SMS script, basically a text messaging script to get the attention, I guess, when you're doing text message blasts, I guess, to keep from being deleted or getting that unsubscribe stop text message say, hey, get me off your list. So do you have a script that you use for that? Anything? Well, it depends on what you're using. If you're using just uh, some text blast service, that's not going to work. It's going to work on a short term. Um, like the text to flip platform, which I'm a, uh, affiliated of Batch Leads or whatever, but um, it it is set up the way to stay compliant uh, with the FCC where you're gonna have like, just for one market, you'll have 10 different phone numbers and then you'll have 10 different messages, right? And so it's gonna, um, um, what's the word when, when it's doing it? Um, no. What's the word when it's like a random? It's gonna send the random messages to from random numbers, the random ten messages, the random ten numbers. Keep it compliant, and then it's not an actual blast. You're actually sitting there hitting send now, send now, send now, send now, send now. Send. But you don't have to send that many because everybody's getting them for the most part, and the response rate is just unbelievable. All right, you know, you don't get a lot of crazy stuff coming back or whatever, but the response rate is like nothing I've dealt with before. Or whatever. So as far as messages, um, just simple. Uh, hi, uh, hi, hi, Gene. My name is Reggie. Your property at one two three Main Street. We're interested in buying. Do I have the right owner? But you have to change those up. You know what I'm saying? You're saying the same thing, but different word, different terms, or whatever. So. You can you can only say so much in a text, so. Right. You limited by the characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you have to change. I'm 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 just referring to how these platforms, but there are other services out there besides this. But I'm just telling you how it works or whatever. So. Okay. Okay. And that keeps it compliant. Hmm. Because you're 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 sending out text messages to individuals that didn't opt in to receive text messages. Right. Yeah. Any input, Renikia? Okay. So, well, this Renikia, and I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you because I don't want Ty to give me the answer because Ty is going to say Google is your friend and we're not, we not doing that tonight. Um, but the question is, what is an irrevocable trust and why would someone have a house as an asset in one? Number one, I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. I know what it is, but I can't explain it. She can probably <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, a, a trust is a, is a, you know, if, if I had to like simplify it, it's really just a, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an asset protection vehicle. It's an asset protection vehicle. If I had to simplify it. So the reason why people put it in a trust, because one thing about it, trust do not pay taxes, nor can a trust be sued. So when you are buying and selling in a trust, you um your your return and your profits are not taxable because it's in the trust. Everything goes back in the trust. Your in everything goes back in the trust. So like I said, the trusts are not taxable, nor are they um, um nor nor you can sue a trust. So it protects your asset from taxes because you don't have to pay taxes on the upside of your investment. Hopefully that um, answered your question there, Shashko. I do believe that's who asked that. Um, guys, someone asked on Instagram how they can get in contact with um, you, Renikia, or a representative for your company. So, guys, it's on your screen. And for those, I know Instagram is timed out, but that's okay. It's fun. You brought it back? Yeah, try. 
Okay. So fundmynextdeal.com. Renika is most definitely available across all social media platforms. Facebook, first and last, Renika Williams. Um, Instagram is Renika. And you can always email funding at fkfinancials.com or just simply go to fundmynextdeal.com. Guys, just keep in mind that, you know, we're all here tonight, but this is a very successful business that she has running. So you're going to have to give her time or one of her associates to reach out and get back in touch with you. And then just make sure you keep an eye on your email because that's more than likely how they're going to reach out to you and just make sure you're responding and giving them the information that they need from you to take you to the next step. Um, so Renikia, we've been on for like an hour, but let's talk about this stimulus money. Now I see a lot of, I'm just going to say, I see a lot of the posts on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, like, you know, make sure you're saving that money, pay your gas, pay your power, pay your rent, pay your car. And I'm just going to tell you, I work in retail. And when those checks first dropped on the 15th, we blew out our sales projection by 51%. We comp 50 Wow. Let me find out. Those stimulus checks and what I think we're going to talk about what we should do with those. But that's exactly what it's for, guys. It's not for your rent or your car. Note. Now, granted, if that's what you need to use that for, most definitely do. But the purpose of it is exactly what it says. It's to stimulate the economy. That money needs to go back into retail. So, hey, if you did want that PS4, that 65 inch, or, you know, that new whatever, whatever that you wanted, that new dining room suit, that's what these funds are for. Um, I don't know about that, that. Man, man. It's the same <laughs> Yeah. You're supposed to go out there. What is it for? Boost the retail businesses. Oh, but that's not what we're going to use it for. Oh, wow. That's not what we're going to use it for. Oh, it's yeah. not. <laughs> it's to help people keep up with their, you know, where they were. Correct? Yeah, but if it's you don't if, if, if you don't know of no other money coming in, I don't think you need to be out there. I buying said tea. that from the get go. <laughs> some you have some that are fortunate enough to still be working, and that's just okay, an added well, bonus. That makes a little bit more sense. That, okay. That's an added bonus, correct? So yeah. those fortunate souls and some of our people here, mm. um, hopefully we're making do. But Renika, we know mm. the numbers. They came out 12, 5, and 5 for your kids and all that kind of stuff. But just say you were an individual that just got the $1,200. And you were an individual that actually had something saved up. So this wasn't necessarily for your rent, your car note, your insurance. You have $1,200 as of Tuesday. And you're beginning your wholesaling journey. You watch videos and you've just been waiting on just a little edge to get out there. What are you doing with your twelve hundred dollars to start your business? What are we doing with it? Uh, if I had twelve hundred and I wanted to start a wholesale business, um, I will, I will uh, buy bandit signs. I will, I will, I will just, I really will just put up bandit signs with it. So I'll buy bandit signs. Maybe I'll, I'll take maybe two or three hundred dollars and buy bandit signs. I'll take another three hundred dollars to fix my credit. Um, and the remaining is to, um, follow up behind your bandit signs. I mean, I mean, there's other ways driving for dollars. So I'll just put in, uh, maybe two to three different marketing campaigns that I can do with, with $500 driving for dollars, um, get you a few hundred bandit signs, um, for a couple hundred dollars, um, and get you a, get you a yellow tab, a yellow tablet. It's, it's a couple dollars to get your yellow tablet instead of you, you know, writing um, when you drive for dollars. The next step is to go to the go to the property records and um, and send out a yellow letter or a postcard. You don't have enough money for postcards, maybe. So go get your tablet and a pen and you write out the letter and you mail it to them. So that's another, um, you know, just cost effective way for you to get some some leads out there. And then I'll focus in on uh, what can I do free on the internet to generate leads as well. Okay. So you've got it up and running. The question is always for most on the subscribe and oh my gosh. Ooh, they take everything so daggone serious. Yellow, yes, Ronald. Ain't nobody wild and sit down well. A yellow tablet, a steno pad, legal pad. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's a yellow tablet. It's a, it's a yellow tablet. I mean, okay. it could be white, but get now you a you tablet have, and a pen. You still <laughs> have some money left. If we're doing the 12th, what you said, the bandit signs. Um, 
You set the tablet. You set Drop the it for dollars so you can dollars. write the letter. Now, okay. and then and then two or three hundred dollars towards your, your fixing your credit because that that three hundred dollars can put you in a place of getting fifty thousand okay. dollars. So you know, I would put something towards fixing my credit if if. You, you want to tap into your credit. You want to be able to u utilize that. So if your credit is not in the best light, I would definitely focus on that. I mean, honestly, just thinking about putting a couple hundred dollars towards your credit and it gets you an extension of $50,000 credit line. Okay. So you're about what can you do with that? What about the question that everybody else, should I get my LLC? Are we using the last few hundred dollars for that? I mean... I mean, that's not a bad idea, but it's not a necessity to get your first deal. Okay, gotcha. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Well, I, I'm not here for promotion, but I'm just answering the question. <laughs> so, abandoned signs is a good idea. Three to four hundred dollars on them for a couple hundred abandoned signs, right? Right. Okay. Other thing I would do, I would go watch this video here: how to use text message. Uh, how to, I'm sorry, how to text message motivated sellers find deals faster. Go watch that particular video because you can be in the game, right, for, mm, what's the list, what's the name? Probably about 500 of that. So we're, we're at 800, still got 400 left. Yeah. And the rest mm -hmm. of us are driving for dollars for just gas money, stuff like that or whatever. So, and then she's a fixed credit, so or whatever, so. Now, that's what I would do. Those are going to generate the fastest leads for you for that small amount of money. You don't need but one to hit to send you one to the moon. One deal to make the difference. So I think go to the moon. Bandit signs and some type of marketing, whether it's yellow letters or the text to flip. Mm -hmm. And you can hold off on the LLC until you get the first deal, which is what you typically, what we typically say anyway, to get that under your belt. Sounds like, sounds like a plan, guys. Oh, yeah. And then as always, Come back here on Thursday. Yeah. Come back here on Thursday. And let's see. So you got some ideas. On... And, and if you have some deals and you want to mm -hmm. need a buyer for them, uh, send them over to us. And we'll be glad to partner with you uh, on those opportunities if they are deals. Another video, you guys, I would recommend that you go watch that I put out, uh, was it Monday? Is on owner financing. Uh, check out that video. Um, also, just do owner financing and flip man. And uh, that particular video will, uh, uh, I think it'll it'll change your mindset on a lot of the opportunities you probably have let go because the seller didn't give you a price that was a that made it a cash wholesale deal. So definitely, you want to check out that particular video. Um, also, on uh, owner financing. All right, there you have it, guys. Uh, Mike Webb, not a bad idea. Mike Webb says, well, not necessarily with Ty, but partner up and everyone invest in the property. Everybody uh, pool the money together and invest in and possibly could be something. Could be something. You guys know how the numbers work and you know what you possibly could find. So, yep, sounds good. So that's the, own, that's the title of the video there. What is owner financing, a.k.a. seller financing? How to use it to wholesale more houses when sellers say no to your to your low ball cash offers. So look for that particular video title and you will thank me later. Mm -hmm. Huh? What is that? It's it's uh what is host what is uh owner financing? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There you have it. You guys go check that out. Rick and Thomas, you're more than welcome. And everyone else, thank you for joining us back next Thursday. 6.30 Central, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Take care. Be safe. Um, much blessings, many blessings to each and every one of you. And be wise with your coins. Obviously, you know, that's it. Anything? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Holla. Flip man, flip man, it's the flip man. Flip man, flip man. You want some money in your hand? In your hand. Flipping houses without credit or your cash. Cash, yeah. bag. bag.